We view it as an important region, uh, but I mean, I've been here doing some interviews and I feel, to be very honest, as an academician, probably there's a lack of awareness on opportunities that prevail in this region. So businesses have not moved in in a big way. Um, if you look at our trade, trade is the fastest in instrument to integrate with this region. It's in the tune of USD 471 million based on the 2013 statistics. Now that's very, very small. I mean, of course, you can't compare to like countries like China and Chile. That's about USD 33 billion. Um, having said that, um, I think there needs be an awareness between uh, the business communities in both regions. I don't believe it's just a one-way thing. Looking at Latin America too, uh, they would also perceive Malaysia as probably insignificant within ASEAN because when I look at it from the perspective here, when they think of Southeast Asia, they only think of China, Japan and South Korea. Likewise for us too. So I think it's a two-way thing that there needs to be some kind of awareness. Yeah. Chile, I think we have some common interests. One is that we have diplomatic relations with you all since 1979. We have common political interests. Uh, we are both pushing for South-South kind of cooperation. Um, and it's the only FTA that we have with Latin America. So to start off those three factors could be a push. And um, the Prime Minister has actually mentioned that Chile should be the gateway for Latin America. Of course, uh, in reality, on ground, we have not uh, looked at Chile seriously. Uh, trade is growing, but minimal. But um, I think with more awareness and with the business community coming in and with more trade missions, um, we, we can see trade growing. But at the moment, we still look at Chile uh, as, a, as a major export destination. Of course, most of our trade with is with Brazil, Mexico and Argentina. Chile is still relatively small compared to these three big players, but it's an avenue for us to diversify our markets. Yeah. Uh, probably um, ASEAN looks at it favourably because ASEAN does look at Pacific Alliance as a, a favorable group to link with and Chile being a member of the Pacific Alliance and um, being a highly open economy, good institutions, easy to do business, you know, it ranks very well uh, in terms of tariffs. I mean, you have a very low tariff structure. I think being ASEAN being a very trade dependent economy in that sense, Chile is very favorable. I mean, if one were to look at Brazil and Argentina, they have levels of protectionism that are quite high. In Chile, you don't really have that. So uh, the ease of doing business with, uh, with Chile is really favourable. So I think in that sense, ASEAN tends to gain. It's a plus factor to have them as a sectorial partner. I feel there are prospects. Now, if you look at um, we are basically importing a lot of copper from y'all and we are sending a lot of electronics parts and components. But I see huge uh, prospects in the exports and imports of um, manufacturers of metals. Uh, I feel that this could be one potential sector that Malaysia could move in. Um, if you look at the reason ASEAN wants to form a block-to-block -block alliance with Pacific Alliance is to actually emulate the kind of supply chains that we have in ASEAN. Now, this looks very far-fetched when you look at two regions that are geographically very distant. But if Malaysian companies who have an edge in manufacturers of metals, which has been growing, if they were to come and set up their firms beside the lead firms in Chile, which are your major copper industries, I think they can service those industries and supply chains can be created. So the potentials are there. The problem is to get to the business community to realize it. 
Um, and the second, um, uh, second sector that I see potentials from the Chilean perspective is halal food exports, which is a big thing. And um, I mean, if you look at Malaysia, it has one of the most stringent requirements for halal certification. But yet, one questions why Chile wants to still get that certification. Uh, the answer is very simple. It's because um, once you get the certification, you have inroads to the various Muslim-dominated markets in ASEAN, Indonesia, and beyond in the Middle East. So both ways, I guess, their, uh, their um, uh, prospects is just that to realise the prospects, you need like a platform. I think tourism has to come. Uh, people need to know about this country both ways and Chileans need to know about Malaysia um, the easiest way is tourism but tourism it's more of people to people connection uh, now we have the government to government connection through let's say the free trade agreement but what we do not see is the business to business connection so besides tourism I would recommend trade missions um, intensive trade missions. Uh, my concern is I've seen a lot of trade missions, but do they come into fruition? Do you see people going back and actually establishing partnerships with Chile? Uh, sometimes you do not see it. Maybe the people participating or the business entities participating in these missions are, do not have the capacity uh, to actually engage because from my interviews I noticed you have a lot of pro Chile has gone there to network with our fruit growers. Uh, you may hit one or two businessmen but you do not hit in big numbers. So you need to see the big players in the industry and for that I would think the ASEAN Business Club, the businessmen should be told about um, what is in store in Latin America for them to come here. Yeah, so trade missions, I would say, trade missions and tourism, yeah. Okay.